Earlier this week, as we said, Lisa Jackson was here giving a keynote address, and she referred to the clean energy that is available here in Denmark. According to the EIA, the country gets about 20% of its electricity generation from wind, yet roughly 50% comes from coal. Still, the sector is growing. And this morning, Clean Skies' Lee Patrick Sullivan is taking you to the world's first commercial-scale biomass plant. At this refinery west of Copenhagen, the Danes are spinning straw into gold, liquid gold. This is the first commercial scale, second generation biofuel facility. Denmark Oil and Natural Gas, known as Dong Energy, has been burning straw in its coal-fired power plants for years. But in an effort to lower its carbon footprint, the company started thinking of a way to use this farming country's excess straw. Could we boil the straw? and put enzymes on it and then develop uh, bioethanol out of it. So that was the start of it. So Dong Energy started a subsidiary called Inbicon, and its top scientist, Lenny Milkinson, stepped in. Together with her team, they developed a process to turn non-food crops into ethanol. It starts in this storage facility, the size of 10 basketball courts. This is our straw storage where we uh, store the straw for up to uh, 60 hours of production. And in here we have an automated crane that can find and lift the bales onto a conveyor that conveys it into our mechanical pretreatment of the straw. The facility was dedicated last week by the heir to the Danish throne, Prince Frederick. And the prince brought a gift from his own farm. And he brought with him his own hay as a gift for us uh, to run and make ethanol out of. So this is royal straw. This is royal straw. We'll sell this on eBay. <laughs> After being put on a conveyor belt, the straw is then cut into five centimeter pieces and sent to a cooker, the first of two major breakthroughs by Inbicon. The cooking takes place inside this reactor. It's cooked at 180 degrees C for approximately 10, 15 minutes, and it's fed through the inlet in the top over there automatically and transported through here by a screw conveyor and the outlet is to the bottom over here. From there, two byproducts are extracted from the cooked straw, a molasses-like substance that can be fed to livestock and the outer membrane of the straw is made into little pellets to be used as fuel in Dong's electric generating power plants. Inbicon says it has more energy than coal and helps the plant reduce its carbon emissions. And this waste product you can use uh, and fuel back to the power station and use uh, as, a, as a fuel in the, power, in the coal fired power station. So there is a symbiosis between the old fashioned power station and the new plant. What's left of the straw is now a cake like substance and needs to be broken down into a liquid. This is where the second major breakthrough in the technology takes place. It's been cut, it's been cooked, it's been squeezed and separated, and then the cake part ends up in this. Now what, what happens in this tank right here? In this tank we add enzymes for release and degradation of the, of the sugars and the, in the straw. And uh, we have a high solids content, so therefore this is a special patented tank that can handle the high solids. It's very important for us to maintain the high solids content in order to maintain the, a very good energy efficiency of the process. And from there, it's piped outside to silos where it ferments for another five days and becomes ethanol. The process can be used on any biomass that is similar to straw, such as switchgrass. And Inbicon says with a little tweaking, the technology can turn other waste materials like corn cobs and stalks into ethanol ending the food for fuel debate. Inbicon has already signed a deal to license their technology to North Dakota-based Great River Energy. The plan is to build a facility there 10 times the size of the Denmark plant. You will have a reduction of 85% in CO2 emission when using this ethanol compared to gasoline. And in the United States you have a mandate that you want to produce 16 billion gallons of ethanol, second generation ethanol, so that will really reduce your carbon footprint by employing this technology. Now the folks at Ibicon say that when this facility is filled it will hold 480 bales of hay that will produce 25,000 gallons of ethanol every two days. In Kohlenberg, Denmark, Lee Patrick Sullivan, Clean Skies News.